Basically, I don't want anyone to feel like West End Theatre is inaccessible to them and impenetrable just because of cock. Can I say impenetrable and cock in the same sentence? That feels, that feels willfully dangerous. <sighs> Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my stagey YouTube channel. If you're seeing my face for the first time, my name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. And have been since a very young age. I spent the entirety of my teenage years taking the train to and from London to go and see as much theatre as I could. And as a result, I am a big proponent of affordability in theatre. Which is why I absolutely had to come on here today and talk about this controversial topic going around social media right now. It's no surprise this story has blown up as much as it has, because, you know, on the one hand, it is very contentious and very morally questionable, and on the other hand, it is also very fun for journalists to come up with titles. There's just so much mileage in it for clever puns. Let me explain what I'm talking about. So as it turns out, even with property prices surging, the most expensive thing in the West End is actually c Get your minds out of the gutter, I'm talking about the play, Mike Bartlett's play, being revived at the Ambassador's Theatre, starring Jonathan Bailey, Joel Harper Jackson, Jade Nushka, and Phil Dan. Daniels, previously starring Taron Egerton, who had to drop out of the production due to ongoing ish. I can't even remember what the lie was. Hold on. Personal circumstances? Ongoing COVID recovery? And while losing one of its biggest stars, arguably its biggest star, Taron Egerton being the movie star that he is, who rarely makes an appearance on the London stage compared with Jonathan Bailey, who is a big TV star with Bridgerton happening right now, who frequently appears on the London stage. So where losing Taron could have been a blow to the production, they managed to regroup by really focusing their energy on promoting and publicizing the amazing performance being given by understudy Joel Harper Jackson, who is now stepping into the role full time. Which is a fantastic thing. We love to see understudies being celebrated and we love the message that the ticket price remains what it is in spite of the performance that you get. However, <laughs> these ticket prices. Turns out the production is not completely out of hot water because the other day on social media, people started pointing out that Cock is selling tickets for 300 350 and 400 pounds for performances between now and the end of its run. I'm gonna say that again. 300, 350, 400 pounds for premium seats each. If you buy those through today ticks and get a pair of 400 pound tickets, there's a 120 pound booking fee on top. Which by the way, I just have to call bull on because a booking fee should not be proportional. That becomes a tax at that point. And if you want to call it a tax, fine. Call it a tax if it's a tax. But a booking fee should surely be a set rate if it's actually like to do with administrative issues. It doesn't cost you any more to administrate the booking of those two tickets versus two £25 tickets that have a £2.50 booking fee. How can you possibly justify a £120 booking fee and whose pocket does that end up in? Because that is ridiculous. But back to the producers of Cock because they set these prices, not today ticks. In charging £400 for a premium ticket, I can't even fathom. I don't know what you even get for that. I'm going to check what you get for that, actually, because I am fascinated. Does it even tell me? Today ticks won't even tell me. Oh god, my card details are stored on here. I'm done. No, no. Someone take my phone away from me. Very nearly clicked. I forgot I wasn't actually meant to be buying tickets. So I still have no idea what you get for that ticket price, whether it's your standard, like, free program, glass of champagne, whatever. We're pretending that's worth the extra £100 that you paid for this ticket. And the thing is, it's not the most ludicrous prices we've seen in the West End. They have been creeping up generally. The cheapest tickets in town, the restricted views, the back of the circles have been creeping up. What used to be a £15 ticket up in the gods became a 25. Slowly became some shows where you can't see it for less than 39 and we're like, oh well, that's really cheap. It's just changed our mentality where we're now happy to pay that much for an objectively not great seat because that's considered cheaper because of how high the high prices have become. And it hasn't been helped by shows like like Cabaret, like Mamma Mia the Party, like the Sondheim Gala at the Sondheim Theatre. However, in defense of those shows, there have been reasons for those ticket prices. At Mamma Mia the Party, you are getting an entire dining experience. You are paying for the food, you are paying for the atmosphere, you're paying for an awful lot of staff. It's entertainment, experience, and a meal. At Cabaret, it is an entire immersive experience. There is a pre-show, there is a show. You get an awful lot of bang for your buck. The highest ticket prices at Cabaret also include food, include champagne, so, you know, there's that to consider as well. And people were very shocked to see £1,000 stalls tickets being sold 
for the Sondheim Old Friends Gala recently at the Sondheim Theatre. However, those incorporated a donation towards a foundation, the details of which were fairly murky at the time and I find slightly questionable, but it was built into the ticket price. So there are reasons. However, what happens is subconsciously, producers see these ticket prices and everyone just kind of moves together and steadily the ticket prices increase, but the reasons for them being higher fade away. Food is not being served at the Ambassador's Theatre. No one is eating at cock. At cock. I said at cock. Wash your ears out. So there's really no justification for them charging £400 for tickets. Now, when Matt Hemley from the stage reached out to the producers for comment, they made a statement, which was objectively hilarious, and I'm going to read it to you. Now, this is from producers Elliot and Harper, who I like generally, and so I'm sad to see this happening. A spokeswoman for the production said, since the production went on sale last year, 15% of all tickets sold have been at £20. There is a daily lottery for every performance where more tickets are also priced at £20, and you're just as likely to win the actual lottery, in which case you can buy all the tickets you Want. As the show nears the end of its run, the remaining premium ticket seats are based on supply and demand. Supply and demand, which is a euphemism for saying we are charging this for tickets simply because we can, because the demand is there, because we know that they will sell, regardless of how we price them. And sadly, I think that's probably the case. I think there are people who are privileged enough to be able to spend that kind of money on a theatre experience. However, my question is, when those people who are happy to fork out a grand for a pair of tickets to a play that is one act long arrive at the Ambassador's Theatre, a theatre that I have gone on record before to say needs gutting, they are not going to have a thousand pounds worth of theatre experience. Cabaret at the Kit Kat Club does not charge a thousand pounds for a pair of tickets, and I still think it's a thousand pounds worth of theatre experience, definitely more so than Cock at the Ambassador's. At the Kit Kat Club, you have this amazing pre-show, you have the interior, you have swanky bars, you have a stylish auditorium, you have comfort. The Ambassador's Theatre has uncomfortable seats, cramped bars, terrible sight lines, a claustrophobic space that is too warm, so warm that its cast collapse intermittently throughout the previews. You have four actors on stage, only one of them is a celebrity name. I just feel like those people are going to feel incredibly shortchanged. And there's going to be people sat near to them who bought their tickets earlier, who are not going to have paid anything near to £400. I mean, the reality is, when you're sat in a theatre, there are people sat near to each other who have paid different amounts because tickets have been purchased different ways. I've definitely experienced that before. But if I had paid £400 for tickets, I would want the people near me to have suffered almost as much. I just feel it's incredibly bold charging luxury ticket pricing in a theatre that does not provide a luxury experience. I'm not saying anything about the quality of the show here. I think its duration makes this questionable. I mean, I've heard for years people don't want to pay more than £25 for six because they think that it's too short. £400 for cock is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. I just think it's completely morally irredeemable to charge that much for tickets. Even if you can, there is no excuse. It is just greed. If you are more upfront about needing to recoup certain costs, about how challenging it is to produce during a pandemic, fine. But to just say supply and demand, to simply acknowledge that you are charging that much because you think you can get away with it because other shows have started to become more expensive around you is ridiculous to me. What's interesting is life comes at you fast and the producers have now slashed those tickets prices in response to the social media backlash. So the top price seats are now down to £175, still ridiculous for that play in that theatre, but whatever. And the £350 seats are now down to only £150. £300 seats reduced to only £125. However, will these producers survive? When contacted by the stage, the producers did not want to comment on the change, which I find incredibly insincere. Like, if you can't even acknowledge the wrongdoing here and how morally questionable it all was, perhaps another the statement is going to be forthcoming from Elliot and Harper, but it seems like maybe not right now. Honestly, this production has had so much drama surrounding it. Screw Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, this is Marianne Elliot and the Cursed Co- <laughs> Oh, so dumb. Now, I don't want anyone's takeaway from this to be thinking that West End Theatre is not affordable. There are plenty of affordable routes into West End Theatre. Having spoken about Today Ticks before, the Today Ticks app is a brilliant way of getting rush tickets, of getting lottery tickets on the day of a show. You get great seats for 25 pounds, 30 pounds, some of them 15 pounds, others. It's a really fantastic scheme that I make use of all of the time. So many of the shows that I see, if you see me on Instagram posting great views from my seat, it is very often a Today Ticks rush ticket. And you can 
also open yourself up to a lot of great theatre by looking beyond the heights of London's West End. There are some amazing smaller venues where you can see fantastic West End performers in other brilliant shows. Venues like the Southwark Playhouse put on excellent work for considerably less. Also, there are so many ticket schemes worth looking into, whether it's early bird tickets, whether it's young person's ticket schemes. There are plenty of venues that still do stuff like this. The Old Vic do discounted previews. The Young Vic have their Lucky Dip ticket scheme. There are many, many ways if you look into the websites of accessing these shows for less than you may think that you have to pay. Basically, I don't want anyone to feel like West End Theatre is inaccessible to them and impenetrable just because of cock. Can I say impenetrable and cock in the same sentence? That feels, that feels willfully dangerous. And while producers can charge whatever they like for their own shows, I do think there is also a responsibility to make theatre and all theatre some kind of accessible. And I think that all theatre productions in the West End have a certain amount of responsibility of ambassadorship to represent accessibility in that way. I recently got in slightly hot water when I reviewed La Boheme at the King's Head Theatre, which was an opera production in a pub theatre, you know, in a very intimate setting, which is not how you traditionally see opera. It would normally be at the Royal Opera House. It would normally be at a huge, huge venue where the stereotype might be that tickets are very expensive. So I acknowledged in my review that the average ticket price for La Boheme was less than it would be in a more traditional staging in an opera house, which is still factually correct. However, I was told this was potentially deterring audiences needlessly from seeing opera because there are many affordable ways that they can still get great tickets. There are some great £10 tickets in the top of the Royal Opera House. And while they do not give you as great a view as the ones that cost hundreds and hundreds down on the floor, there are still ways of getting into the venue. So I stand by what I originally said, but the point remains that theatres should all have some kind of accessible pricing structure. It might be limited, it might be that you need to get in quickly to get access to them, but it's something I've always championed, especially ticketing initiatives for young people. I think getting young people and new audiences into the theatre is so important because they are the future of theatre audiences. If we just forsake and ignore an entire generation of young theatre goers and consider theatre to only be something that belongs to the older generations, then it's just going to disappear appear completely. The industry will not sustain itself with that kind of a mentality. There are a lot of interesting schemes across London. Prima Facie with Jodie Coma is offering a pay what you can scheme. I mean tickets to that and access to that are very limited and you have to kind of fight your way through the internet every Wednesday morning. I haven't even tried yet but it's an interesting concept. In fact let me know in the comments section right now about your favourite ticket schemes available in the West End. How do you access cheaper tickets? Is it through an app? Is it through a website? Is it through a particular initiative done by a venue? Let me know your favourite way of finding affordable theatre tickets in the West End. And if you're very lucky, maybe I will compile them all and make a video including some of my own secrets as to how to get very, very, very cheap theatre tickets. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for plenty more stagey content coming very soon about all your favourite shows. As well as more stagey news and drama and gossip because let's face it, it's constant at the moment. Also, if you would like to support me as a stagey content creator, head over to patreon.com forward slash Theatre, where access to exclusive photos and videos does not cost £400 per person. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>